I want to welcome you. My name is John Love. Uh, welcome you to our monthly ProChant series where we're talking about uh, all sorts of things around really our pharmacy reimbursement. And of course, this month we're talking about intake. A uh, quick reminder that uh, you can type in a question anytime and we'll try to answer that throughout. We'll also have a, a time at the end. Only a 30 minutes, so 29 more minutes. So we won't, we won't take a lot of your time, but we do these every month. And so if you uh, haven't seen all of the other webinars we've done, I want to invite you to go to www.prochant.com and you can see all the on-demand webinars there. And so with that, we are talking about uh, intake today. And um, it's a, a, a kind of a, a big deal for us. So we, if you don't know who ProChant is, we're the nation's largest um, post-acute reimbursement outsourcing firm. So hundreds and hundreds of employees, almost a thousand employees globally, been in business for 21 years, and people outsource, uh, fusion pharmacies and HMEs outsource their intake, their billing, their collections. Um, full, sometimes we have um, staff augmentation. You know, we have a lot of those different things that we do. And, and we do hear a lot uh, why we focus so much on intake if we're mostly a billing and collections RCM company. So to answer that question, I want to welcome in my partner for this one. So again, just tell you quickly, my name is John Love. I'm Vice President of Business Development for ProChamp. Uh, I lead the pharmacy division over here. Uh, you may know me from previous gigs I had at COO of Rock Pond Solutions or led the sales uh, for the home care division for WellSky. So been in this space for about a decade or so. Know most of the people uh, around it and enjoy it very much so. I want to introduce uh, Suzanne Burnett. Suzanne, are you on with us? Oh, I can I see am. you. Right <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. So Suzanne is uh, an expert in billing and an expert uh, in really from a ProChance stand, she's our lead uh, manager when it comes to intake. So been in that space for about uh, a decade or so. Suzanne, you're a, a nationally licensed pharmacy tech as well, so clinical background, and you live in the great state of Texas. So welcome and uh, glad for you to be here. Uh, I guess my first question is uh, why would a reimbursement company like us put so much emphasis on intake when we're mostly about billing and collections? Well, I think that billing and collections begins at intake because a lot of, uh, a lot of clients think that they have a reimbursement issue or a collection issue. And actually the issue is at intake, at an intake level. If things are done, uh, properly on the front end, you avoid the issues on the back end. So, um, you know, proper um, benefits investigations and right. proper, you know, documentation on the front end will avoid any issues on the back end. Yeah, we're, I think we're going to get into all that. I mean, you've got a clinical background. We run into a lot of folks um, who, who, who don't have intake under someone who's clinical, um, What's your suggestion there? I mean, would you suggest that the best practice would be having someone, a licensed tech at least, running that intake? Well, I think so. They come with a lot of experience from the pharmacy side of things. Um, they know the drugs. They know how they're administered. They know uh, what a patient, you know, what would qualify a patient to, to be on a certain medication. So a clinical background, uh, I think, is essential. Uh, to be honest, and we have a team of professionals that have that type of background that can easily look at medical records and determine whether or not this patient will even qualify for, uh, you know, uh, for whatever services have been ordered for him. So a clinical background to me is essential on the front end of things in particular. Yeah, that's a great point. I think the biggest issue we see around the country right now and why a lot of infusion pharmacies are struggling is that they don't have the necessarily people power. You know, they lack experience or maybe they're just lacking people in general. So a lot of that is showing up in, in really three major ways. Um, the first one, the first major problem we see is around collecting medical records. Um, you know, I, I think for a lot of the folks on the line, these are going to feel kind of a little bit like, you know, hey, no brainers, of course. But maybe we can talk uh, specifically um, you know, around like the issues that if you don't know proper documentation for different therapies, um, maybe you have staff members who um, maybe they do understand antibiotics, but they don't understand something else. Maybe you can take us through scenarios that you want to avoid in that. Well, things to avoid is just um, 
accepting a referral at face value for whatever's been ordered for a patient. There are a lot of guidelines, not just Medicare guidelines. Different insurance companies have different qualifications or different levels that they require a patient to have gone through before they can be on a certain therapy, particularly very expensive things, IVIGs and different things like that. So, um, you know, if you have somebody with a clinical background, it's much easier for them to say, scan a referral, you know, um, you know, easily scan a referral and see, does this patient even qualify for what's being ordered? Um, do they have IV access? Is it appropriate for the therapy and different things like that, particularly when you come to very high dollar drugs, IVIGs, factors, and things like that. You want to make sure that that is, uh, that you have proper documentation for that on the front end. Yeah. So anything that, you know, what we see all the time is, when that's done poorly, we always talk about intake. It's kind of the foundation of the house, you know? And yeah. so you kind of go and you say, hey, I need to fix the roof. And someone says, no, it's just going to break again. You need to fix the foundation. That's, that's, and so intake is, is, is a struggle for a lot of folks. Um, my guess is because it's so time consuming. Uh, may, maybe you can talk a little bit about working with case managers and what you recommend and, and, and just the reality of how time consuming it can be and why you have to be fully staffed. Well, just like you said, there's staffing issues in all different areas, uh, you know, all over the place. So your case manager might not just be at her desk all day long waiting to answer your questions or provide you the documentation that you need. She may, she's also a nurse that's seeing patients during the day. So sometimes getting the documentation from a case manager can be multiple phone calls throughout the day. It's very hard to have your intake person um, uh, have to, you know, spend so much time just chasing documents down um, when there are a lot of other things that that time needs to be dedicated to. And, you know, we have a team of people that um, can actually help facilitate, you know, having the proper documentation in place. So, uh, it kind of alleviates some of that time burden that a client may feel on on the intake side of things. Yeah, I think we're estimating, a, you know, about 60, 70 percent of infusion pharmacies are understaffed in intake. And so what's happening is um, the moment you get to one of those difficult case managers who's also doing something else, also a nurse, and you're spending an hour. I mean, Suzanne, you can spend an hour on, on the phone, you know, with one with one script, you know, and I mean, if you have what we see, which is an intake team of what? One or two people a lot of times? Exactly. And how, you know, and, and that's if you're lucky. So who's doing the other referrals that are coming in while this one is chasing that down? Who's doing, um, you know, a thorough benefits investigation for maybe another one or even the referral that they're working on? It's, it's extremely time consuming to spend so much time on the phone chasing documents down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so when you're understaffed or when you think you're you don't understand that you're understaffed, what what what's happening is that, you know, if you've got two people, one of them's working that really long IVIG arguing with United Healthcare, whatever it is, you know, doing what we all do. Right. And the other one is trying to get through the workload too quickly and making mistakes. So what happens is that goes all the way to billing. And then what happens? It comes back out and we have to redo everything. Therefore, we become inefficient. And so, so when we look up and you come to someone like us at Prochant and you say, we have a cash problem, we often say, actually, we have an intake problem. You know? And so that's what we're here to talk about is, 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 is really it begins with, do you have a single source of truth and a single system to collect medical records so that your intake people can collect a, an antibiotic record just like they could IVIG? And if they can't, you are in a place that has risk. You are in a place that, that is, is slow. You are in a place where you have to fix that. Um, you know, our second, you know, key, which shouldn't be surprising to people on the phone, you know, is around our benefits investigation. Major problems happening left and right across the country in, 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 in benefits verification. And it all begins with not verifying online. Um, and, and, and the ones that are not verified online, they need to be called. Like, you know, I mean, so walk us through a scenario of why we, you got to do that and it's not really an option. 
Well, again, it's a time issue. And like you said, you can spend an hour, you can spend two sometimes on, on, on the phone with these insurance companies. But the problem with verifying benefits um, online only is that it doesn't give a full and complete picture of a, what the, uh, the individuals or the patient's actual benefits are. So it may tell you that they have coverage, but it's not gonna give you their home infusion benefits or specialty benefits. It's not gonna tell you that maybe the drug has to go through a specialty pharmacy uh, you know, and be billed differently. So the only way to get a complete picture of someone's uh, benefits is to actually call the insurance company. You have to know all the questions to ask the right questions, and that needs to be properly documented so that later on down the line, you know, in the event of a denial or an appeal, you have proper documentation in place. And this is, this is the most time consuming uh, for an intake person. So uh, maybe, maybe you've got somebody working on benefits investigation, but you've got case managers that you need to keep a good relationship with. And you know, they're going to voicemail or they're not able to, to speak to right. that intake person, you know, regarding documents that they need to get over or, or whatever it is. So um, it's, you know, and again, we have staff that are dedicated to benefits investigation alone, and that's what they do all day long. They know these insurance companies inside and out. They know what they're looking for. They know um, exactly what to ask them as far as a patient's coverage goes. So yeah, and, and, and what we see all the time, you know, Suzanne, is, is that someone does kind of the shortcut, right? They don't make yep. the phone call. So they make an assumption, you know, then, you know, let's go and talk about how do we have, you know, we have to do all of that in order to have a leg to stand on for an appeal. But guess what? When we didn't do that, we, we, it was a long time ago. We don't remember you know, we, we pushed it through quickly. We didn't document well. And now we're in a, a spot where we don't really have a good idea of how to appeal this. Um, because again, we took a shortcut early on. Exactly. And, you know, they're sometimes even verifying online. It might not tell you what, let's say their out of network benefits are. Maybe they don't have out of network benefits and you're out of network with them. And, and there you go. And, especially if when you onboarded the patient, you gave them certain information that you thought was valid information because you verified benefits online only. Uh, for instance, maybe their policy ended. It is possible that a policy is not, you know, that it might still show active coverage. And in fact, they don't have coverage at all, um, you know, when you verify that online. But if you call them, they have up to date um, it's live, it's right then, and they can tell you whether that coverage is active and exactly what that coverage is. So uh, super, super important that insurance companies be called and verified. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, we haven't gotten to where, you know, verifying online gives a full picture. Right, yeah, and, and, and we're just not there. And so making that assumption is, 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 not, is not wise. So uh, have our first question, Suzanne. We're gonna put you on the. We're gonna put you on the hot seat. Um, Karen's asking, "Hey, what's the staffing model we should be using based on volume for intake staff? I mean, is there is there one? You know, is there a staffing model, or does it come down to therapeutic classes? Or um, I would say it comes down to therapeutic classes. It does depend. I mean, there are certain um, payers that your company may be contracted with that are super easy a quick referral, an intake person, it, it may already come with the authorization in place because that's just how your contract is based with them. Uh, maybe they send the referral with the authorization already and they know exactly what needs to be sent. You've got a home health agency that's the, the contracted as well. So the, everything is already in place when you get that referral. That could be in and out the door in 30 minutes. Then again, you could get something that's much more complicated that you have to qualify a patient for like TPN, IVIG, something like that. And um, that could take an intake person four hours to do or yeah. days even. Um, some of those drugs, you may not wanna dispense until you have your authorization in place. And if that's the case, uh, you know, that may pend as a referral for a couple of days until you get that, those documents in place. 
it's very hard to determine. Um, personally, I would say that an intake, uh, one intake specialist working 10 referrals a day would be an extremely busy day for them. Um, yeah, and productive. Yeah, and, it would be productive, but it would be extremely yeah. busy. And it depends on what else their responsibilities include, uh, whether that's fax wrangling or whether they also field incoming phone calls to the pharmacy. Uh, right. You know, um, if you have a person oh, that's well, that's that's gonna uh, that's gonna go right into Tammy's question, which is, can you share all the positions that you consider part of the intake team? You know, and and maybe 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 somebody does multiple of them, but you know, what do you, what do you think? Well, I would say it's different depending on how you're how you're structured, but it would be anything from fielding, like I said, fielding incoming calls, um, and that would be all calls to the pharmacy, including transfers to another department. So you're just fielding the phone calls, um, and uh, of course, uh, fax wrangling. So the intake person would be responsible for the fax machine and assigning all the faxes to uh, different departments as well. So not just dealing with intake faxes alone. That would be um, receiving all the new referrals, contacting your case manager, your resource that sent that, letting them know you've received it and that you're starting the process. It would be benefits investigation. It would be um, requesting authorization, authorization renewals. Um, it could, an intake person could go all the way up to billing review. Um, so that would be. And some do, right? Some do. Some do, absolutely. They, some, uh, some really large pharmacies pretty much go all the way to billing review and consider it intake, you know? And then, because usually they have centralized billing that they don't want to do anything but plug and play. They want to make exactly. sure everything's perfect, you know. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Our, our our third key, obviously, is authorization, right? And so, and we haven't talked about that. No, we want to talk about that, um, you know. And so, obviously, it's important to have complete and accurate authorization, but it is essential that we have it on on these really high dollar drugs. I mean, the high dollar drugs that are affecting our clients at ProChamp Infusion and our, um, our partners and other, other pharmacies that are on that aren't our clients today, we cannot afford to make a mistake on high and, and, and to play around on high dollar drugs. Is that correct? I, I would 100% agree with that. And again, this is a phone call. Uh, there are a few occasions and a few payers that uh, perhaps you can uh, submit something online. There are some different state Medicaids that will allow you to upload the documents and request it through a portal, um, for instance, um, and there, there might be others out there as well. But the best way is going to be, again, it's a phone call. Um, you need to know what codes you're con what billing codes you're contracted for. You need to make sure that all of those codes are requested so that you're getting your maximum return on this, uh, on this dispense. And um, you know, always documentation. It's always a reference number. If an insurance company tells you no authorization is required, it's still okay to request that authorization or a predetermination. And you always, <clears throat> pardon me, you always want to see something back uh, in writing that, that provides you the authorization number, the number of units. You have to know what how many units you need to request for what type of therapy. So uh, I'm going to ask you to, to double down right there. Um, okay. So we, you, you think a best practice is when you have a high dollar drug that doesn't require authorization, what do you think? You think, what do you think? What should, what should you do? I mean, they say, oh, I don't require a higher, you know, just uh, you get one anyway. Well, you may run across that and um, uh, best practice, I would say, would be to request one anyway. Occasionally, okay. a payer will tell you you can't request one because one isn't required. So then the default would be to request a predetermination, um, which is sort of different wording, but it will still give you something in writing, a response in writing from that insurance company that states everything's fine with us. You can dispense. No auth is required. 
and, and no predetermination or whatever it is, you know, or they will give you a number with your, you know, a reference number with that predetermination request that you have then for your records. Again, it's to have a leg to stand on in the event of a denial or an appeal later on down the road. So, yeah, so, you know, piggybacking on that, I have a question here from Sarah. It says, so it's appropriate to request authorization even if the insurance states that they, that it's not required because they've gotten conflicting information before. It absolutely is. And there are times that two intake people, in my experience, I've had it myself where I've called an insurance company and I've been like, man, I can't believe they told me that there's no auth required for this. How can there not be an authorization for whatever it is? Let's just keep right. referring to IVIG. Uh, I may go to a coworker and say, can, can you call and just verify this with me? Because they, they won't allow me to request an authorization. They told me it's not required. And a, you know your counterpart may call and have a different rep and be told something completely different. It's absolutely appropriate to request authorization even if they tell you it's not required. And that could be your company policy on certain payers that you know are known for denying. I, I've uh, worked for people before that have said, you know what, if it's Blue Cross Blue Shield, we're requesting authorization on all Blue Cross Blue Shield with the exception of Blue Cross Blue Shield Federal or whatever it is. So that, that could be a policy that your company puts in place for certain payers that you know are known to do that. Um, yeah, but this seems to be a hot topic. We have another question. My, my benefit as uh, investigator, this is Brittany, get different answers from different insurance representatives at the same company regarding benefits. What would you recommend doing in those situations, especially if you're not, if we're not very comfortable with this insurance company? Um, I haven't found that to be uh, quite the same as far as benefits goes, but um, um, it's a thorough investigation. If you verify the benefits online and the rep that you speak to sort of mirrors what you've already seen online with the exception of the home infusion benefits, if it's still confusing to you and you're getting conflicting information, um, you can escalate that. You can escalate that to a supervisor that can clarify. You can ask them to fax you detailed benefits that may help you as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you wouldn't think it would happen, right? You would think that there is a yeah, dialogue. Think you're, you're hearing from two people at the same insurance exactly. company, different things. Yes, um, I, but I it think, does happen <laughs> all the time. So, so you feel pretty comfortable escalating? I absolutely would. It, you know, a lot of these representatives want to try and hurry you off the phone, and you're already in a hurry because you're you're slammed with work and you're super busy. Don't allow them to do that. <laughs> you know, you right. if you need to speak to someone else, if you need to escalate it to their supervisor, um, let you know, make sure that they allow you to ask all the questions that you need to ask. Follow your template. You know, we here at ProChant, we have some very detailed intake templates for benefit, benefits investigation that we follow. And we fill in every blank in those so that we get that complete picture. So make sure that they, you know, allow yeah. you to, to to do all, uh, you know, to ask all that, fill in all your blanks. So to speak. I think that's key. I think it's key to sit down here and, and just tell everybody, and there's a lot of people online right now and just say, you know, the insurance company, the, the, the representative, they have goals. How many calls am I going to get through and do today? Exactly. Um, so it's almost like tennis, you know, Hey, listen, you, you can't just let them dictate. You have to say, Hey, I have goals too. And that's that this gets fully done. And so you can't brush me off the line because you need to get to 45 calls today. I got to make sure that, that I get it done. So I think one, one thing is really helpful coming out of this conversation is that that communicates all the way down to your investigators and your prior off people and your off people that do not, do not allow the insurance company to, you know, hush you along and you feel 70% good about it because they won't care. Look, like, that they're called payers, and I don't know why they're called payers. <laughs> they should be called non-payers because exactly. they don't want to pay. So do not give them the benefit of the doubt of 
of saying, oh, I promise it'll be fine. Because when they come back and they, <laughs> and they deny you, they are not going to care that their person said it would be fine. They could care less, you know. So, hey, yeah. the last thing we're going to go into, you know, got four minutes left here, um, is really this idea of practicing internal, great internal communication. Um, you know, maybe give us 30, 60 seconds on, on why we just harp over and over that it's not just you're communicating with third parties, you've got to be very good at communicating internally. Exactly. You, the last thing that you want, um, you know, for your bottom line is to dispense a high dollar drug and not have an authorization in place. And we're talking about um, either a new patient or an existing patient. Those authorizations are only good for a certain amount of time, sometimes 90 days, sometimes a year. It just depends. It is so super important that intake document properly the authorization information and that the pharmacy department and any other departments, uh, you know, that deal with that all the way down to your delivery department. Hey, should we really be sending this out today that they, um, you know, adhere to those communications so that nothing is dispensed without an authorization or an authorization renewal in place. It's also important that they pay attention to when those are expiring and what documents are necessary for a renewal so that there's no gap in service to your patient. The ultimate bottom line is good service and patient care. And you can't do that if authorizations aren't, you know, in place and you um, end up with a gap in service for a patient. And that's something that we want to avoid at all costs. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, in wrapping up, just a couple more things. I mean, number one, I think we go back to, are you staffed? Do you understand? Do you have enough staff to do this? You have to ask that question. You can't begin with a, we have to, in, in this game, we have to go to war with our preferences. It might be your preference to have two people on an intake staff, but you may need three or four. You may need to outsource it. I don't know, you know, um, you know, you, only you can know that. But you do have to go to, if it's just, hey, we've always done that, that that's probably not a good place to be at, you know, um, so that's number one. Uh, number two, you have to get very good at, at, at making sure that your team is, is holding um, uh, the, the third party groups accountable when they call and, that, and doing all of their work in totality because shortcuts will not come back and play well with you. Uh, number three, you've got to communicate well internally. Um, you know, and, and you've got to, to be able to do that and, and put best practices and you have to have a system and a template so that whoever you plug and play into your intake can, knows exactly what to do. If we're doing the train the trainer and hope that he or she just picks it up, they're not going to pick it up. Most likely they're going to pick up problems. They're going to have gaps and those gaps are going to lead to, um, denials are going to lead to cash being outside of your pocket. Um, so uh, in, in, in kind of in finishing, what success look like? You know, the bottom line is this, you know, you need a pharmacy uh, that the gold standard of it has a bad debt of 3% or less. It has cash to net revenue of 97%. It has a, a, a lower DSO than 50 days, but for really about 35. That's, that's kind of where you need to be at. You know, at ProChamp, we, we want to be here to support you. We give out complimentary audits where we analyze your cash net revenue. We look at your, your AR. We do random ticket reviews and best practices of intake as well. We'd love to do that at no cost because most of our clients come to us because we just simply find a way to partner with each other in some capacity. And this is really what we're all about. You know, we're hundred percent about the pharmacy revenue cycle and getting in where we fit in. So I want to thank everybody for being on. I want to thank Suzanne uh, very much so. Uh, here are uh, our uh, emails. If you want to reach out to us or Suzanne, if you want to reach out uh, if you have more questions. Um, we'll be back next month with another webinar. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate it. And have a great week. Thanks, John. Thank you.